Hey, Adam, how are you? I'm doing pretty good, Grant. Uh, great to be on the show. Really excited to be here. All right. Well, I'm excited too. And I know uh, a couple of weeks ago when you and I got on the on the phone and, and chatted a little bit, I was really excited uh, to learn more about you, but just to share just your journey, uh, your high performance uh, mindset and the things you're doing for people. And I mean, you have a really, really, really interesting background and I'm just really excited to share with my listeners what your mindset's all about. Appreciate it. Yeah, no, it's, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it's interesting because I suppose I conditioned my mindset from a very young age, right? And, uh, and, and, I, and I guess being an entrepreneur now has these huge advantages, Grant, you know, and, uh, you know, so, I mean, as you know, my background was in um, distance running, you know, uh, I studied and trained with the, the current world and Olympic world champion in, uh, in five and 10,000 meters. Uh, his name is Mo Farah. He's a GD athlete. And um, I suppose my story is, is um, wh when I was, when I was at the age of 10, actually, I actually um, uh, lost my hair through a condition called uh, alopecia, uh, which is a common form of stress and worry. Um, won't go into the gist of it, but as you can see, I don't have hair, still don't have hair, uh, <laughs> but currently you got used to it. Um, but at the age of 11, um, interestingly enough, um, I went through a bit of a, I suppose, you could call it a midlife crisis, but I call it a young, a young age crisis, uh, where a lot of things kind of happened to me, I suppose, at the age of 11. Um, I, ex I, I got into entrepreneurship, number one, but secondly, I got into um, distance running. Uh, I remember... I remember I was kind of encouraged or enthused by what my dad had said to me. He said, Sam, why don't you take up running? Because he'd taken up running for like the past year. He was pretty new to it. And so he encouraged me to go down and I went down to the local uh, athletics track. And I remember this kind of sort of, I suppose, middle-aged woman, uh, short, short, dumpy woman, probably around five foot one. And, uh, and, and she asked me, she was like, Hey, so how can I help you? You know, there was this kind of 11 year old boy, um, you know, kind of a little bit scared of intimidated because, uh, and then she was like, Hey, so how can I help you? And I'm like, yeah, I'm kind of interested in joining the athletics uh, club. And she's like, oh, great. Fantastic. Um, what's your experience? I'm like, I've got zero experience. She went, okay, no worries. Not, well, what are you interested? What are you interested in doing? I was like, I'm interested in doing distance running. She went, okay, great. I said, um, I said, but there's a problem. I said, what's the, pro she said, what's the problem? I said, I'm an asthma sufferer. She went, what? He went, no, I'm, a, I'm an asthma sufferer. Um, so when I was young, I, I'd, I'd suffered from asthma quite bad. And, um, and uh, she said, not a problem. Well, I'll introduce you to one of the coaches and uh, you can have a chat with him and, 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 and see how it goes for you. I went, okay, great. So anyway, um, turned up at the athletics track, went down to the athletics track and, you know, you get all of these, experienced athletes you know track and field athletes alike and sprinters and you know one of the first things that goes through your mind is i don't fit in here right you don't fit in here because you feel very intimidated by all the other experienced athletes and so i was with a group my first coach was called alex mcgee now, alex was i suppose he was a champion back in the heyday but what i loved about alex is he turned normal people into champions you know that's what i loved about alex so he had this young group of uh, kids or whatever it is. He was kind of looking after the kids between the ages of eight and upwards, eight to 16, I would say. And so I learned so much from Alex, actually, because when I first started off, I remember this. When I first started off, he was like, okay, so we're going to do a warm up. I went, great. So you do three laps around the track and, you know, just warm up or whatever it is. I couldn't even run 100 meters without getting out of breath and kind of suffering from a, I suppose not a mild asthma attack, but I mean, I was really bad, Grant, like really bad, right. uh, you know, and, and, and first session, I remember the first session, it was just, I'm already thinking oh, I'm, I'm way out of my league here. You know, if I can't even run hundred meters, how am I going to get into distance running? So, you know, the goalpost is like so far apart for me, you know? Um, so anyway, um, decided to go back. And decide to go back. So we trained Tuesdays and Thursdays and we would compete on Saturdays and Sundays. Now I didn't compete straight away because I was that bad. <laughs> and in the winter time, um, you know, it would get down to like minus five Celsius, uh, which is pretty, pretty cold. Oh yeah. And, you know, it was, it's pretty cold. So you had the athletics track, which was floodlit. And up the back of the athletics track, there's this like 
I suppose, boggy, muddy field, which was completely in pitch black darkness. And so during the cross country season, or leading up to the cross country season, I would be at the back of that field on my own, literally running around this field. And my coach would be giving me some directions and saying, right, Adam, you go do X amount, whatever it is. So what all, all the other kids were playing video games, I was out in the freezing cold weather in my shorts and t-shirt running around a track, you know, um, and that kind of stuff. So anyway, cut long story short, nine months in, um, my asthma had started to disappear, like literally nothing, zero. Um, and then this is where I actually found my, my, tra my, my training partner, my former training partner. Uh, and uh, Mo essentially is Somalian born, came over to the UK, very little English, uh, the only family that he knew was his, uh, with his aunt and his cousin. So he lived, lived with his aunt and his cousin. And we had a kind of a similar background, you know. I suffered from uh, being bullied at school a lot, uh, from alopecia and stuff like that. And I was low in confidence. He had exactly the same thing, yet he didn't speak English very well. So what we did is we actually bounced off each other's energy. We actually motivated each other. So we encouraged each other to work harder. We pushed each other. And through that encouragement, that is essentially how we ended up building our, I suppose, mental toughness and our self-discipline and some of the habits that, you know, some of the aspiring Olympic athletes, you know, essentially master very early on in the, in the game. Um, same with American football, same with baseball and basketball, exactly the same things. You're drilled into your mindset about some of the things that you need to set yourself up for success. And this is some of the things that I actually learned from a very young age, which I now actually bring into the entrepreneurial world today. You know, when you talk about that, thank you for giving that, that backstory because there's so many things that you had to deal with from an adversity standpoint, confidence standpoint, mental toughness standpoint, which I, I, I always touch on with my show. So when you think about like all of your experiences and what you're, what you're doing now as an entrepreneur, as a game changer, like when you think of the two words, mental toughness, what does that, what does mental toughness mean to you? Mm. It, it's a great question. Mental toughness to me is, I suppose, I suppose it's kind of toughening yourself up when you go through challenges, whether it be physical, mental, spiritual, emotional, you know, because those are the four remits, right? So mental toughness is about kind of making improvements to your life in those particular areas. You know, so mental toughness can mean many different things to many different people. And so mental toughness is essentially going through, there's always going to be highs and lows in life. Like there's highs and lows in running your, in being an entrepreneur, right? That's, that's, that's life. Okay. But it's when you're down in the dumps and you're down, you know, I could have given up my running career. Okay. Straight away. You know, I could have just thrown the towel in and that's it. But if it wasn't through my self-discipline and it wasn't through my mental toughness and my resilience to not give up, then that's why, that's why I believe that that's given me the platform for success. And you talked about those highs and lows, right? So when you think about your whole career, mm -hmm. now I'm going to ask you for a specific time, like whether if it was in athletics or in the workplace or in business, what was your biggest mental win? What was your biggest mental fail? Well, I don't ever see things as failures. I always mm. see, I always kind of see, for me, I always see them as learning points. So okay. um, I never see things as failures, but I suppose for me, my biggest, um, I suppose, I wouldn't call it a pivot because I'm, I'm not a big fan of that name, uh, but I'd probably say adaptation is probably a really good word to use. There you right? go. Um, so I think for me, my big win really is, um, especially this year in particular, actually, is um, I've really kind of, one thing that I've really learned, especially from interviewing some of the world's renowned business disruptors and influencers like Dr. John D. Martini and Bob Berg and some of the real big heavyweights of the entrepreneurial world. Some things that I learned off that Dr. John D. Martini's, um, who's one of the world's um, I suppose he's the, the one, probably one, the, one of the world's renowned psychotherapists in the world. And he taught me one thing that we learned when I interviewed him um, during our summit this year. And he said to me, he said, Adam, he said, number one is that you've got to align your values to what 
you really want in life? What is your purpose in life? You know, so this is something that I really kind of, and it kind of really hit me here this year, right? So the penny dropped for me and I'm like, wow, some of the things I'm doing right now is actually, I actually believe it's kind of, things were so out of place before, but now they're kind of aligning. And a lot of the things I'm doing right now, I'm, I'm, I'm a lot more happier. I'm a lot more content. I feel like I'm creating impact on a much bigger scale. Um, you know, and we talked about this off air, you know, about the fact that, well, if you're not in a good place, well, you can only go so low. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You, you can't go any lower than low, right? Right. So, right. so, the, so what's, what's the only direction you can go in? It's up, right? Yeah. You can only go up. You, you can yeah. never go down if you're really low. So I think for me is that, uh, I mean, there has been so many low points. I've had more failures than I've had achievements. I'll be honest with you. Oh, yeah. And that goes in, that goes in athletics, that goes in business or whatever it is. But it's what you learn from those, fa uh, from those learning mistakes or whatever it is that you want to call them. It's what you do with that and how it makes you grow as a person. So one of the big mistakes that I think a lot of people make, whether it be in athletics, whether it be in uh, sports or in uh, working in the workplace, is doing the same mistake over and over again and not learning from those mistakes. Yeah. That's just stupidity, right? That's insanity, as, as I understand, with doing the same thing over and over again, but expecting a different result. Right. So, so for me, I think that... Uh, there are lots of mistakes. I, I remember, I'll, I'll quickly share one, one thing actually, which was really interesting. I remember a few years, a couple of years ago, actually, this was only a couple of years ago, believe it or not. <laughs> I actually ended up starting up a company. Um, and I'll quickly share this with you. For me, it wasn't really a failure, but it was kind of more of a, an eye opener more than anything else. So I opened, a, uh, I founded a company called Nourish Food Club. So here in Scandinavia, which is where I am at the moment, um, baby snacks which are like things like chips and uh, fruit bars snack bars things for like toddlers and stuff like that. they're very generally expensive and they only come in single items and so what i do every few weeks is i actually go back to the uk and i actually bring bring back a suitcase of snacks for for my kids or whatever it is okay. uh, purely because it's more value for money you get in multi-packs and stuff like that so i started getting really frustrated and I thought, right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually create a snack box for toddlers so that parents, when they run out and they look into their cupboards or whatever it is, and they think, oh, crap, I've got no food for the kids or whatever it is to take to school with or whatever it is, right? So we created a subscription and snack box, did all the market research and things like that. Now, it sounds, it sounds good on paper, right? All the parents probably listening to this right now thinking, oh, I want to sign up, I want to sign up. But actually, for me, it wasn't the best thing at all. It was actually quite the opposite. So I know my specialism and I know what I particularly enjoy doing. This was completely out of my comfort zone, Grant. Number one, it was dealing with e-commerce, zero experience. Um, <laughs> number two, it was dealing with logistics, zero experience. Number three, um, you've got to think about, it's, it's much bigger. You, you know, you've got to think about infantry. You've got to think about, um, you know, is it really worth it in terms of... Um, uh, you know, the, the, the price that you pay in for a product and what you sell in. So is the margins going to be enough and things like that. So there's so much to take into consideration. And for me, I probably wasted probably the best part of around six to nine months to try to launch this. And, and then at the end of the process, I thought, actually, I'm not sure if I really enjoyed doing this. <laughs> so, you know, I love it. I love, I, I'm always an, an admiration of people that reinvent themselves. Okay. But it really kind of goes back to number one is what is your purpose in life? Okay. Number two, what is your passions in life? So if you're not doing what you're passionate about, then you're going to become a very miserable person. Uh, and number three, does it add value to people? You know? So if, it, if, if, if you, if you kind of fit those three things that, and, and it, and it fits the criteria, then then go with the flow. But if it doesn't, if it misses one of those three or it doesn't, then guess what? You know, it's going to be a disaster. Right. Exactly. You know, and it's funny with all the things you've gone through, um, you know, you've, I know, and you're, we're all a work in progress. So we're, we're constantly continually working on ourselves. But if you were to describe your mindset, like what would be that one word? Hmm. Hmm. My one word, that's a tough question, you know, 
Uh, I think for me, it would probably be, or it's a choice between two. I think for me, it would probably be speed because my, my, I'm probably tuned to, to, to think very quickly and I execute very quickly. Uh, and secondly, probably the second thing that probably comes to mind is results because I'm such a result. I'm so result orientated. So I, I'm probably more passionate about, you know, about the results that you guys want to achieve in terms of your listeners and stuff like that, than you are about yourself. And it's all about belief systems, yeah. you know? So if you're, you've got a, a low belief system, right? If you've got a low belief system, then the, guess what? The, then what you're doing is you're essentially remitting the negative energy out there. And then guess what? You, the people that you speak with or the people that you want to connect with or whatever it might be, whether it be an employee, whether it be uh, someone that you have within your business, or in your teams, they're going to feel it. They're going to feel a disconnection, you know? Um, and it's, and, and, and it's so true what the universe tells you, even though I'm not a religious person, by the way, Grant, I can tell you this from experience, this stuff works. I'm telling you now. <laughs> well, here I, I am a a hundred percent believer in the universe. Um, I, what, whatever you put out there in, in an, in an authentic way, uh, it will come back tenfold. And but you have to be prepared for it. If you're if you're not prepared for it, you're going to get overwhelmed. But I, that's something that I've learned in the last six years is that I've been authentic with with my intentions, and I put out so much. And and it's just a beautiful experience when you're just letting the universe work, right? Absolutely. So with that, with you know belief systems, um, which I'm I'm glad you brought that up because the work that you do. Mm. I mean, you're you're working on empowerment strategies, mental strength, limiting beliefs energy and time management. I mean, you're doing a ton of work for entrepreneurs with all the stuff you do and all the people you work with. Mm. What's that reoccurring theme you see? Like, what is that, that barrier that always shows up with these entrepreneurs that you're working with? <laughs> That's a good question. I, I think for me is I see that there's a regular pattern between a lot of people. Number one is perfectionism. You're always waiting for the right time, the right place, right environment. You know, everything's got to be 100% perfect before you got to launch it, right? There's no such thing as perfectionism. So throw that thing out the window and just get it done. All right. So that's the first thing. Um, secondly, is that a lot of the people that I work with um, tend to be six figure business owners that are essentially um, very successful in their own right, but they just, are missing their key, the key to unlocking serious amounts of growth. So for example, um, one of their big challenges is delegation, you know, being able to hold on to that, you know, I can do everything myself type of mentality when you can delegate as much as it out, right. And, and make your life so much easier. So I see that a lot, right. Uh, number three is they bring in the wrong people. Uh, so, I'm a big believer, even if you're in a, even if you're in team sports or in, even in the individual sports, if you don't bring in the right team members, right, then guess what? The chemistry is going to be wrong. The culture is going to be wrong. The result, the end result is going to be wrong, you know? So one thing that I see um, <clears throat> right now is a lot of entrepreneurs, when they do decide to delegate, they, they delegate the wrong things and they, they build a team up. They build the wrong team up. So I'll give you an example. One of our uh, one of our uh, members of the Game Changers Next Level Club that we that we've created, um, she is a, a very successful lawyer in a in her own right. So she is an entrepreneurial, um, in, you know, she she runs in the family law industry. Uh, so she she's a six figure business owner, but she had five administration staff. Five. Okay, so things doing such as email answering, social media, mixture of different administrative tasks, right? Um, most of them were doing at least 25 to 30 hours a week. So she was paying these five administrative people. So that's 150 hours, call it 150 hours a week of administration work. And then she was basically, she was the only fee earning person. So I said to her, I was like, hey, so... This is what you got to do. I want you to get rid of at least three of your administration people, okay? As in, goodbye, streamline, make it more efficient, 
put some systems and processes in and then bring in some fee earning people or some sales people that's going to be able to help you grow the business. Okay. So one of the things that I teach a lot of my clients is making sure that they bring in the right people. So with, with in her case, cause it was really just her and her administration staff. What it needs to be is her plus three fee earning people or salespeople. So your team members plus one administration managing everybody else. That's it. That's your basics. She's like, Oh, I get it now. So she's just actually in the last two weeks, she just hired her first sales person and now that person is now earning money for the firm right and now she's already double in doubling she's already increased her sales by 30 times in a couple of weeks wow so yeah. that just that's just crazy because the thing is it's 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 all about mindset we, we're talking about mindset this is about this is about making sure that Rather than coming up with the excuse of, I can't afford it, I don't have time, uh, it's all mine, you know, and, and all of those insecurities and limiting beliefs that you put upon yourself, it, 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 mindset is a foundation. It is a foundation to success in everything you do, right? Whether it be run a business, whether it be run a successful event, whether it be, in a, a, whether it be in an athlete, you don't have the mindset, you don't have the foundations in place. You're never going to be successful if you don't have those in place. Yeah. I, I, I echo that a lot because I feel when you talk about the foundation is a mindset, you know, there's so many ways of looking or defining what a mindset is. And for me, I've, I've the simplest perspective or definition is intention. Mm -hmm. If you don't, if you're not intentional about something, how are you supposed to have a mindset? So I always say mindset equals an intention or intention equals a mindset. And, um, and that allows you to have that foundation that you're talking about. Absolutely. Absolutely. And mindset can mean so many different things to so many different people yeah. because we're all on different journeys. We're all uh, accomplishing different things. We're, we're all on this earth to do something a little bit differently. So we may have a slightly different technique, uh, whatever it is. And, and what works for me might not work for other people, right. but guess what? The fundamentals don't change. Right. Exactly. Well, you know, and, and right now I'll, talk about the, the big white elephant or pink elephant in the room with the pandemic, right? The pandemic is, uh, I believe across the world is just, it's injected fear-based thinking. Mm -hmm. and, and I understand it. I understand why. But um, at the end of the day, we control that fear. So if you were to share a message or advice or uh, guidance uh, to entrepreneurs right now, how to work with or move through this pandemic what, what would it be i think there's a couple of words of advice number one is uh <laughs> i think this is a really good point is never make judgments about other people and compare yourself to other people because what you see on social media what you see out there is number one probably not true what you see is it's just on the surface level okay so that's the first thing secondly you become who you associate with the five most common people you hang around with so yes, most of us are working from home or whatever it is. Hey, if you're doing uh, Zoom or if you're doing some sort of online networking, digital stuff, or whatever it is, make sure that you're hanging around with people that are more successful than you. Because if you don't, if you want to, if guess what? And, 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 and this is, I, it sounds really, really um, basic, but if you want to be a broke person, go hang around with broke people. If you want right. to be a negative person, go hang around with negative people. It's not rocket science, guys, right? It really right. isn't. Right. Um, so I think that to me is, you know, that's absolutely key associations. But number three, which I think is really important is to plug out from distractions. You know, so one of the things that Olympic athletes in particular, you know, athletes in general are particularly great at laser focus, you know, is to block out all of the noise because there's just too much noise out there, especially with the media and watching CNN and, you know, NBC or whatever it is that they're, they're talking about the same thing right? You've got to plug out from that stuff. And I think one of the reasons why I suppose I haven't really been affected by the whole kind of pandemics type of thing, it's purely because I'm so focused on helping others, right? Going back to your purpose and your, and your, and your values, because for me, I genuinely love to help people. That, that, that is the, one of the reasons why I live on this earth. Is because I genuinely like to help people, authentically like to help people. Okay, so then you, again, you have to go back to what is your purpose? Why are you here? You know, so 
that has nothing to do with what's happening on in the, in the world. Yes, it's sad to see people pass away and, and so forth. But in reality, does it help you move forwards? No. You right. either move forwards or you move back. Exactly. And the big problem that I see is that a lot of people move back. For me, I choose to move forward, but that's because I make a choice. We all make choices. We're the pe only people on this planet to be able to make choices in life. So you have to make a decision on what choices you decide to make. No exactly. Else. Exactly. And what I love about what you're doing is that you're in service. And, um, you know, to be in service, you need to be present. But still, um, when you're in service, man, you're moving forward. And it's, and it's I, to me, out of all the roles in the world, I don't care what it is, being in service, it, to me, is the best. This is the best role to ever be in. Serve without expectation, my friend. That's what it is. Serve without expectation. And, and I'm a big believer of this. The more that you serve humanity, the more that you serve people, and it doesn't matter if you're, a, if, if you're an athlete listening to this or if you're an entrepreneur listening to this, the fundamentals don't change. The more that you serve and you give value to people, the more that you will be rewarded. Now, some people might say, well, Adam, I get what you're saying and I true, truly get what you're saying, but when will it come? That's a very good question. And I used to ask that question to myself all the time. And, I, and you know what I say to people? Patience. You have to learn to be patient. And then some people might say, well, patients don't pay for my bills and pay for my... Listen, again, it's going back to the fundamentals, right? Right. It's going back to the mindset. It's going back to the values, right? Because I can guarantee you the more that you give to people, the more impact and value, and they will rem remember you for the right reasons. Exactly. And, and again, remember, what are human beings designed for, right? They're not motivated by money. They're motivated for achieving a vision or a mission. Yeah, they're, they're, they're motivated to be significant. They're motivated to create impact. That's, that's, why, that's what I'm motivated about. Some, okay. some people are a little bit different, which is absolutely fine. Some people are motivated by money, and that's fine too. But generally, if you look at like what Gallup has done in terms of the employee engagement and um, um, surveys with a lot of corporate companies and employees and that kind of stuff, you'll see that I would say that only a small minority of people, which I think is less than 17%, is actually motivated by money. Wow. Wow. But you know, you know it's really funny um, when you think about uh, patients, especially because people want, the, you know, they want results. They, they, you know, they want it. Well, being patient with the process. And for me, process drives results. If we all wanted to focus on results, we all would, you know, if we can control the results, we would. But it's about the process and it's about enjoying that process and honoring it and being patient with it. And if you are, again, going back to the whole universe, if you are working your process and you're authentic with it and you're trusting the universe, trust me, like that patience will, I mean, I've seen it. I, I, I played a very small, narrow game with my life and with my career for two decades and things completely changed in the last six years because of, I've had I've honored the process. I've honored the universe and I've played a big game and I've just been more intentional, you know? So it's, I, you're preaching the gospel there. <laughs> I think there's one thing that it's, I, I had an epiphany when you were saying about that, but here is something that I really want you guys to listen in really, really quickly here. The longer you wait, the more patient you are, the bigger the win. Ah, that's a great one. That's a beautiful right. one. I mean, it's not rocket science. It's the same. It's, it's a bit like, um, um, you know, if you're, if you're trying to break the world record, whatever it might be, in whatever sport you want to do, or if you want to, you know, do your first touchdown or the first try or whatever it might be, okay, there's going to be a time when you're going to be starting out your career. You might be, an, you know, an experienced athlete or whatever it is. You may have hit some, we've all got personal goals, right? So it's about being patient. Okay. And then waiting for the right time. Cause the longer you wait, the bigger the win. Simple. I love it. I love it. Well, one more question before we sign off here. And this is all about reflection, which uh, I, I believe this is where we find growth. And when you think about your whole career as an athlete, uh, as a game changer, what do you think you've learned the most about yourself? Mm. I think for me is, is that we're always learning, you know, there's, 
I, I can never say that I have got an MBA in entrepreneurship or an MBA in, in athletic, you know, resilience or mental toughness. There's no such thing as that. Is that you've got to be open for learning and continue to learn and be open to learn. If you look at all the successful mentors, coaches, um, you know, around the world, whether it be in athletics, whether it be uh, in your workplaces right now, okay, you know, we all have people that we can look up to. Um, but it's to learn from those people as well. Continue the, the journey of learning because the more that you learn in life, the more that you become a better person. And the thing is, is that, you know, the, the world is a fast moving pace, right? It moves extremely quickly. And so you've got to keep yourself up with the times, but never, ever, ever discourage learning because the more that you learn, the more that you grow. And that and growth comes in many different forms, whether it be mindset, whether it be financial growth, whatever it might be, but it comes in different forms. Totally. The journey of learning. I love it. I love it. So how, Adam, how can my listeners, how can they follow you on social media, learn more about your podcast and about all the great things you're doing right now? Sure. Um, well, if you'd like to connect with me, uh, you're very welcome to uh, come over and listen to the Game Changers Experience podcast. Uh, we have a mixture of uh, uh, Olympic athletes and sports personalities as business influencers and disruptors. So you're very welcome to listen to that on all your big kind of podcasty um, uh, channels. Um, so that's the first thing. Secondly, if you want to check my website, you're very welcome to it's adamstrong.net, uh, adamstrong.net. So you're very welcome to connect with me. And what I was going to say is if you do connect with me, uh, please just mention this podcast so that I know who, cause I get so many people trying to connect with me. Right. And I'm like, Oh my God, where, where are these people to come from and that kind <laughs> right. of stuff. So, um, but yeah, uh, got some got some great exciting stuff coming up. But yeah, uh, be happy to connect with you guys. Awesome. Well, Adam, thank you so much for your time and your energy and and sharing your journey. Um, I really appreciate it. It was an honor. You're welcome. Have a great day. Awesome.